Hi, I'm Lindsay Kassam, Nutrigenomics Counselor and Health Coach. Gluten, is it bad for everyone? Should we all be avoiding it? Should it, is it bad for you? These are the types of questions I will help answer. And also there's one thing you should know before you cut gluten from your diet. Before I go into this, I need to ask you first, if you like these videos, please like or subscribe. It really helps me to know if I should continue doing this and also head on over to my website and subscribe for weekly updates because I do plan on doing this going forward. So gluten, it's the main protein found in wheat, barley, rye, and spelt, mainly in your pastas, your breads, and your baked goods, amongst other things. It is often demonized because it is not digested by any human fully. The human enzymes cannot digest all of gluten. With that said, that also happens with cauliflower, some other vegetables, and other foods. So it's not always such a bad thing because what happens is when it's not digested, it causes small tears in the intestinal lining, which sounds bad, but for most people that heals up quite quickly, does not pose a problem. And some experts actually consider it to be a good stress, just like exercise, that, because it upregulates the anti-inflammatory cytokines in our, immune, in our immune system and things like that. But um, for some others, if we don't have enough strong, enough good, good bacteria or strong intestinal lining, it can cause dire consequences and that's why gluten should be avoided. So it's good to know where you are on this spectrum. And there is a spectrum. There is celiac disease, which is a highly genetic autoimmune disorder and it's in 1% of the population. 1% seems small, but it's still 77 million people and most people it goes undetect undetected. Then you've got a, a very big umbrella of a range of issues. It's range from gluten sensitivity and or wheat intolerance so some people actually think it's a gluten when they could eat sourdough bread no problem but they cannot eat wheat um, others it is a gluten issue but it's not as severe as celiac and then you've got a wheat allergy um, which meet with a different part of the immune system and it's your you know it's the immune the antibodies in your immune system so you have different reactions to each of these and it's different for different people so it's not always the same for celiac, so just a note, I've linked in, in the below link, there's a few links below, but the first one will be an article where I've summarized the top studies around the world based on what, what it says in celiac, gluten intolerance, or wheat sensitivity, and wheat allergy. And I've also included some of the expert opinions of the, the top PhD experts running studies around the world for this. And one of the expert opinions by Dr. Alessio Fasano, he had actually mentioned that it is advised to rule out celiac, along with many other experts, he says the same thing, to rule out celiac before you reduce gluten from your diet. Now, I think that is a reasonable, reasonable advice, but given the fact that it's not easy to test for these things, I actually believe it's better to reduce gluten, do an elimination from your diet first to see if you have any sensitivity, and then if you do, you know that you can do further testing if you suspect you have celiac because celiac is not recommended as general screening um, for the general population so it's not not for everyone to get if it runs in your family definitely it is worth getting that test um, but if not then you need to discuss with your healthcare provider and decide what's best for you it really depends on if you want to do all this rigorous testing first or if you want to just see if you have an issue and then if you have an issue then you can go back and do the testing so it is, does take a little bit of work, but it's worth knowing because at the end of the day, if something is bothering you and you're not doing anything about it, you're gonna create chronic inflammation. So it's good to know. So the best advice I could give is to try the elimination diet and I can help with that if you need support. Now, I am gonna just list off a few symptoms of celiac, but more information in the link below. Um, celiac disease, if undetected, and this is why the experts recommend to get this test if you have any suspicion, it can lead to uh, malnutrition, anemia, type 1 diabetes, MS, autoimmune disorders, depression, fertility issues, miscarriages, low birth weight babies, um, irritability, uh, bone loss, and other things. So there's a whole host of things that could come from that. Um, you can also have gastrointestinal issues. It, the symptoms can be silent at first, um, mouth ulcers, uh, skin rashes, things like that. With um, the gluten intolerance and wheat sensitivity, it could be some of those symptoms, not as severe. And then with um, allergy, it's more like nasal congestion and rashes and things like that. But 
it's important to know if you start to reduce your symptoms when you go off gluten. So this is kind of the, the main key and then other testing can be done. Just a note on testing. Celiac has some blood tests that can confirm it with an intestinal biopsy. You can have a genetic test. If you have the genetic test, it doesn't give you full information. If you don't have the variants for celiac, then you don't have celiac. But if you have the variants, you may have celiac. So you still need to get confirmation by the other testing. Whereas the wheat allergy can, there are two validated tests, the skin prick and the IgE test, which your allergen, allergist will give you. Um, and that can confirm. There's some other things that are needed for confirmation. However, for that middle umbrella, wheat intolerance and sensitivity and gluten, there is no validated test on the market. So there's a lot of companies posing that they have this the best test out there and it's not validated yet. There are a couple of good tests in the US which I've linked below, but often what pe one people come to me with is this IgG food tolerance food detective test and it is not scientifically proven and the results give a lot of false positives. So a lot of people think they have an issue and they don't. So this is one that's important to know um, because that's not an easy way to test it. Uh, if you need more support, please do let me know. If you've got any questions, please do reply to this. Thank you so much for watching. Health up everyone.